Okay, in this video we're going to um, show how to do EC2 user data. Um, so that means we'll be able to install an Apache Linux web server on an EC2 right when it starts up. So then we don't have to go in and manually install it after the fact. So a couple of prerequisites before, the, before we do that. We have to make sure that we have a key pair and a security group. Uh, the key pair is here in the EC2 console. I already have one here. You can create a new one right here in PEM or PPK. Um, so we already have that, so make sure you have the key pair. And then the other thing that I like to have is the security group all ready to go. So there's uh, the security group that I have created here. You can create one over here. So there's one, um, this one, this is what we're going to use, where it allows HTTP traffic from um, anywhere, from any IP on port 80, and SSH from my specific IP, and as well HTTPS because it's going to be a web server, so on port 443 from anywhere. And then the last thing was to be able to ping that instance from anywhere. So we're going to use this security group when we create the um, EC2 instance. So then to create the EC2 instance, we go to here to Instances, we say Launch, we're going to say, uh, we're going to pick the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. And we'll choose the, the T2 Micro, which is eligible for the free tier. And then this is the part that's really important. So we're going to, for the networking stuff, we'll just choose the default VPC. We don't have to, um, like we could, obviously, in a real scenario, we'll have our own VPC with public-private subnets. We could have a load balancer. Um, but for our purposes here, we just want to demonstrate how the EC2 user data works, so we can just choose the default VPC. The main uh, part is right here in this advanced details. Uh, it's, sometimes it's hidden, so you got to expand it here, and this is where you're going to put the user data. So I have the user data ready to go, which is right here. So I'm going to copy this. This is going to. This is very important, by the way. The um, the 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 first line here, this is what's going to be able to execute all the commands on the bash shell inside the EC2 um, instance when it starts up. We're going to, actually this part is not necessary. You don't technically have to make yourself the super, the, um, the root user on that instance because you're already going to be the root user automatically by default when uh, it runs the, the user data script. So we can actually take this out. Um, install the HTTPD package. Um, start the service, so start the, start the web server, and then this line um, allows it to, the web server to automatically start if you reboot the instance, so you don't have to manually go in and start that, um, uh, start the instance, uh, start the web server, sorry. And then this part here, this is going to be a unique um, uh, message from that specific EC2 instance, so that when we access the web, pa uh, the web page uh, on port 80, it's going to tell us like hello world from, and then it'll be the unique name of that instance, and that's going to have the IP, the internal IP address of that instance. We'll be able to see exactly which instance is um, we're accessing. It's going to be important later on if when we do um, load balancing behind multiple EC2 instances, and this will allow us to very quickly see uh, if the load balancing is working properly and how it's working and which EC2 instance is uh, servicing each request. So I'm going to copy this whole um, script, and I'm going to put it here in the EC2 uh, in the user data section like this. Okay, and let's add storage. We can keep as default. The tags we'll just make. Uh, we'll just call this test web server. I'll say user data and configure security group. So this is where we're going to choose the security group that we already created, which is here. As you can see, it has all the rules that we just discussed. And we're going to review and launch. And everything looks good to go. So we're going to launch it. We're going to use the key pair that we created. Again, you should have a key pair created um, for the instance. So you can access it. We're going to SSH into it so we can see how the um, some of the logs afterwards. Okay, let's launch. So it's going to take maybe a minute or two. Um, it's showing here as pending. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video because this will take about a, 
yeah, I'll maybe take a minute or two. So um, I'll come back when we have the instance running. Okay, so we're back and we can see that the, the web server is now running. So it's showing right here that it's running and the checks have passed. So let's just take a closer look at this. So here is the public IP. And if we copy the public IP and we access it here. So here we go. So there's the, um, there's the custom message and it's showing 172, 31, 90, and 24. And if we look at that instance, th that's the same IP, the internal IP of that instance. So we know that it's that specific instance that's serving that request. So now that we know that it's working, so the, the, the user data worked, um, what we could do is we could just do a little bit more of, um, of a deep dive and go into that instance and check the logs. So what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into that instance using the public IP and we're going to check the logs for the user data. So I have um, my terminal here. So I'm going to do SSH minus I and then the name of the PM file, which is, let me just find it. Okay, so it's this one here, testmisha.pem. So we're going to do ssh-i testmisha-pem and then ec2-user and then at, oops, at the public IP, which is, I don't know why it's not pasting, so we'll just paste it manually, 52.203.0. 41.248. Okay. Okay, the first time you're SSHing, it's going to ask you if you're sure, and you say yes. Okay, so there we go. We're in that instance, and you could see the IP matches up 172, 31, 90, 24, which matches up to this internal IP here. And now that we're in the instance, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the slash var log directory and in here you can see there's these two um, folder um, files and we're gonna open this cloud init.log so we're going to open that file and then in here we're going to look for user data and then I think it was success. Yes, yeah, so if you look for user data success, so then you could see reading and applying user data. It's not the best way to do it, to be honest, um, but this is a way so you can actually check that the user data ran properly. If you're going to have problems, sometimes if you, if you make um, an error in your user data script, sometimes it it's going to be, you're going to have to debug it and see what went wrong. So you can go into this file here and get more information about what went wrong with your user data. Okay, and as you can see, uh, everything worked well. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is if you wanted to see what the user data is for any instance, you can select the instance and then you can go to instance settings and then view change user data. And then here it is, here's the actual user data that we used for that instance. This is also a very convenient way. And you can see here, to edit this, you, you can stop the instance and then give it another user data to um, start with. Okay, so that was it. That was how to install user data. And now what we can do is we can create an image from this. I'll probably create another video to show how to do that. Um, so that way, right away, every, any base image will have, um, will have that uh, the Apache web server installed automatically. Uh, but this is a really convenient way now we can use that script for any new um, EC2 instance that we're starting to automatically install the Apache web server with that custom web page.